So guys, this uh, intro is getting better every time. So uh, welcome to another webinar. Uh, we're going to cover quite a bit of interesting stuff today. Um, today we're going to go over how to convert your website traffic into paying customers. And if you stick throughout the whole video, you'll pretty much learn probably three major key components, things that I really love to use uh, throughout my practices of web design and just uh, in general when I have traffic come to my website. So uh, let's just go right into it. And uh, the first thing I want to go over is uh, how we're going to get targeted traffic. So when uh, when a lead comes to your site, when a viewer comes to your site, we want to get the right people uh, that have interest in your business, obviously. Then we're going to go over what is the proper website structure so that we get uh, the best conversion ratios. Uh, we're going to talk about the attention capturing elements so that uh, we achieve those goals uh, from the users coming to the site and to what they want we want them to do on the site uh, we're going to also talk about email and social media marketing which is super important for any business and just understanding the analytics and knowing how to read uh, the data from the site and from the viewers that come on your site a couple of things that i want you guys to keep in mind as we go through this as when a visitor comes to your site, they are there for a reason already. They probably have an interest in what you do or your business, or they had a referral sending into your business. And the, your job right now when they land on your site is to help them make a decision or help them uh, solve uh, the problem they might have. So the one thing that we want to ensure that when we have the website is we have a goal set as to what it is uh, we're trying to do. Are we trying to help them solve a problem? Uh, we're trying to help them learn about our product, whatever that is. So we want to make sure that we provide them with the value and potentially the solutions to whatever they're there for. So the one thing that I also really want you to make sure is that you know the value of the lead uh, for you. So that means that whether it's time or money allocated for ads or marketing, you need to understand what is that, that you're willing to spend uh, time or money on and how much is that lead going to be worth uh, for return on investment. And the last thing is pretty self-explanatory, uh, having customer satisfaction. The more you have uh, happy customers, the more they come back to the site, the more you have uh, new customers coming up from it. So without much explanation, get five stars for everything you do. So let's dive into the traffic. So how do we actually get this traffic? How do we get people to uh, recognize uh, who your business is, uh, expose you to all those uh, audience that never heard about you before? Well, the one uh, and main thing is, I'm sure you heard of the term SEO. That uh, stands for search engine optimization. Doing maintenance on it on a monthly basis is super important. Uh, that's for search engines to be ranking you higher and higher. So you can imagine if you're number one on Google for the keyword that your business is uh, doing really good at, then you can imagine how much more traffic you'll be getting. And this can be achieved through having great content on the site, having lots of uh, people linking back to your site, in other words, backlinks, having a good structure for SEO, and a lot of other things that you need to keep in mind. We actually have a lot of articles and webinars that we talked about in the past. So we'll have links uh, after this video as well. Social media, so obviously this is free. So having um, Facebook, Instagram, and so on all created for your account, uh, for your business is absolutely no cost to you except maybe time to create, unless you obviously go for paid ads, and in that case is pay-per-click, pay-per-view. But uh, for the most part, it's free to engage with people that follow your business. Uh, you get a large audience to see your business at no cost almost. And it's really good to have just in terms of backlinks as well because it brings them back to your site. And that's Facebook and Instagram. Those are authoritative uh, social medias. So when they link back to you, that only improves your SEO. Email marketing. So that's a huge thing that uh, I know a lot of businesses don't do. Uh, it's a great reminder for the current customers that you have to come back again. And it's an awesome way of uh, having people that are just interested in what you do to help them make that decision. Um, sometimes in business, you have to mention it once, twice, and one last time just to get their attention. So, so this might be one other technique to do so. Uh, giveaways, so obviously if you give some free stuff, uh, if you have products and you do a giveaway on, on social media or you do a social uh, email marketing giveaways, you'll definitely capture some attention. People love things that are free. 
So even if they're very small, um, just the word free will get them to come to your site and check it out. And of course, that will increase the traffic, it will increase your website authority, and therefore it will increase your ranking on uh, search engines. And then, of course, uh, as we all have still to do that, uh, constant testing refinements. So throughout uh, the website uh, structure, throughout your email marketing and all the other things you're doing, you have to keep testing what works best for your business. What works for me might be different for you. So you have to see what the fine line is for each business. So I want to talk about website structure. This is one of the key things that I mentioned in the beginning. They're super important to get right. Uh, when a person lands on your site, this is your front door to your business. This is the first uh, impression they get from your business. So it's super important to get that done in, in a professional manner. So usually on a website structure, when you have your laptop or a computer in front of you, you go to a browser, you go to the site, and at the top left, usually you have your logo. So this is kind of the standard. Obviously, this is not a design we have to stick to for this, for this session, but I just want to go over the brief example of what a structure should look like. So the logo at the top, we have our usually our menu at the top right, followed with some social media links uh, around that area as well, because we want to. Uh, navigate them in, uh, to the social media to make sure they see that we are engaging with everyone. We are still a current company. We're not behind. Now, we also want to make sure that uh, we have a big visual image, very modern style, edge to edge almost, um, about our business. Ideally, it will represent something related to it. And the reason we want to do that is because most of us have a five second atten attention span, if not less. So when they land on your site, uh, when they're looking uh, on your site for the first moment, if they don't understand what the website is about, uh, you don't want to lose them and make them go to somewhere else just because they didn't bother reading through. We want to uh, keep it clean and simple. So we want to ensure that everything is smoothly laid out, uh, everything makes sense and intuitive. We don't want to make anyone learn how to use your site because uh, if they're there to get a service or a product, you don't want to lose them just because they don't understand how to use your site. Having a click to action, this is a super important thing, having some sort of button or some sort of action for them to make uh, so that we navigate them to where we want them to land. Uh, when people land on the site, maybe they don't, we're not 100% sure where to go. So if we tell them, hey, click here and we'll show you more stuff, or maybe enter your email and this will happen, they're more likely to do so because you are showing them the route. Now, of course, if we make it stand out and more visible, now this click to action is going to be very useful. And uh, the rest of the website falls with uh, about us, uh, services they offer and so on. But the top is where I wanted to focus on the rest of the website is kind of just following the same structure. Uh, usually it will follow with services, icons. Uh, if you have products, it will follow with the products. Uh, I would I love to have a contact form at the bottom too because it makes it easy for the customer to contact me if needed. And then at the very bottom, you'll have uh, basic contact information, uh, any social media links, and even the menu so they can come back to the top if needed. Always collect emails. Now, no matter what service you're in, if you are in the lead generation business, uh, if you're trying to get new customers to find out uh, about your services and products in the future, always try to collect emails. And that can be done through incentives. It could be done uh, with just asking for the email uh, just to stay informed. Or maybe you have a blog and you want to make sure to keep up with the articles you post. So it's super important to have uh, maybe either pop up that asks for the email with the incentive or at the bottom of the site somewhere have um, a form to just fill out if they want to be and stay informed. Mobile friendly, that's also a place uh, that I noticed a lot of clients uh, overlook. Uh, they make the nice website, but they don't remember that a lot of people use their phones. 90% of us actually probably use our phones nowadays. So obviously have the same structure, just built for mobile, logo at the top, followed by the menu with the drop down uh, click or expanding click uh, for the menu itself. Have the main slider the, uh, in the middle, switching every five seconds or so for different uh, pictures to make the site feel alive. And then the click to action, of course, for mobile, it has to be right there and easy to click on. And then you have your big text, uh, so it's easy to read on the phone uh, following everything else. So email marketing, this is uh, probably another one of the major points that I would love to cover. Uh, for email marketing, it's super important that you don't just collect the emails, but you also know how to uh, follow up with those emails, how to build the right email structures so you get the most views and the most clicks on it. 
So first thing uh, that everyone should try it out, at least if they've never done email marketing, is uh, create an account on MailChimp. It's a free account to do. Uh, this is personally what I use and I find really, really helpful for my company. There's a ton of other options, of course, out there, but MailChimp seems to be the most popular one for me and it does what I need. So in this case, uh, you want to collect the emails, of course, into the database there, onto your database at the same time. Um, if you have a developer that's doing it for you, then they should know how to do that already. Just give them the account information. Uh, you want to send structured uh, newsletters. So what I mean by structured, we'll go over an example of an email as well. But by structured is you want to have all the info that the customer uh, or the viewers that will see this, you want to have to make sure there's a funneling way from them to get to see the information that you're presenting and ideally have the goal of what you want to achieve from this email. Be consistent. So if you're sending a newsletter once a month, once a week, whatever the case is, try to stay on top of it because if they don't hear from you for a while and all of a sudden they get an email, it gets kind of weird, like why is this person emailing me again? And of course, view the stats. You want to, the whole reason you're doing this is you want to know what's going on. You want to see the data uh, of the emails. So you want to see who clicked on what, who opened the email. And of course, if you see one of the clients is opening your emails a lot every time you send them, then they're probably really interested in whatever you have to say. Uh, if it's a lead that was never your client before, then at least now you know if they opened your email 10 times compared to somebody that opened it once, you know that there's a high potential chance that they might become a customer. So here's an example of an email campaign that I'm actually sending out to my clientele list and even just leads that just signed up for newsletters. So what I normally do is uh, at the top area of the email, I'll make it as personal as I can. Uh, it will have their personal name. Now, the great thing about MailChimp is it actually does it for you. If you have your email list organized with uh, first name, last name, and email, then it'll actually fill in the first name for you. So you don't have to manually go through hundreds of names and manually change them. So what I like to do at the top is keep it very simple to the point about what the email will talk about, just in case they open the email and they don't have time and they really don't want to read about it, but they get captured by the first couple sentences, then they will keep going, keep reading it on. Uh, so this is the quick attention grabber. So we just want to ensure that they stay on for the rest of the email. And then as we scroll down, what I personally like to do here is to provide value. Now, depending on what niche you're in, if you have a products, uh, for sale for the season or whatnot, if you have a service that you want to really promote the, for this uh, specific week, then obviously that's an area to use. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to every email marketing, you don't uh, sending another pr product, another service, because at some point it gets annoying, it gets repetitive, and you kind of know what to expect. But on the other hand, if you provide them with value, if you show them uh, here's something to learn from it, or here's some information that might help them in any way, uh, and you don't actually try to sell them, then they might actually read your emails more often. And then the one time occasion that you do post something for sale uh, or a product discounted, then they're actually more likely to see it and more, more likely to click on it. Um, include links. So this is a huge one. So as you do the email marketing, uh, you the whole purpose of this whole email is to track what's going on. So yes, you can see who opened it, but now you also want to see who actually engaged in that email. And it's a little crazy what you can do nowadays with the whole tracking system, but you can actually see what links they actually clicked on in your email. And if they clicked on it once or twice, you are, you'll see those numbers as well. So if somebody opened your email 10 times and then they clicked on every link that you had in there, you know they're super interested in what you have to offer. And as we scroll down the email, as you can see this area here, this is where I would put the either promos that you have, like in small, uh, subtle way of displaying it or in this case I here I'm here putting uh, things that from the path that they might have missed just in case they want to read into it again and probably the whole reason you're doing this is to get them to contact you and this is the easiest way to do so is by putting your email uh, maybe your phone number at the bottom um, I like to include it at the top as well but at the bottom at the very least make it easy for them to find your contact information now here's uh, the the back end of the campaign is the reading the stats. So this is just a general view of a snapshot that I just did uh, from the other other month of a campaign that I've sent. Um, in this case, out of 372 people that received it, 72 people opened it. Uh, so that tells me I can actually click on that 79 uh, number and I can see exactly what person opened it. 
uh, for obviously privacy reasons. I'm not going to show you the clients, but you can see 79 people open it. Four of them actually clicked on uh, things that they saw in the email. Six of them actually never received the email. It bounced, meaning their server or the email was not working. And then four people unsubscribed, which is totally fine. We want to make sure that out of the people that open the emails, um, that we want to make sure that the four people that unsubscribe, we, they're funneled out because they're no longer interested, which is fine. We don't want to keep bothering them if, not, if they don't want to see our stuff. At the bottom area, uh, the 24-hour performance, you can actually see how your email was performing throughout time, and you can see with what time particularly it opened the most. So when did you capture the most attention? In my uh, campaign here, it was around 3.30ish or 4 o'clock. Uh, obviously, for your business, it might be different. It also could be at the time that you send it, everyone will open it and they'll forget about it too. So you can see throughout the day, around 8 o'clock in the morning, the next day looks like somebody started to open it again and again. So it really depends. Just test what works for you, and throughout time, you'll have a good understanding what times work best. All right, so the next area is social media marketing. And this is another super important uh, area because it's probably the biggest thing that we have now, like Facebook and Instagram, Twitter. All those platforms are one of the best ways to get uh, audience that you've never could have had otherwise. So creating those accounts, like we said earlier, is absolutely free. And I see no reason why you shouldn't have those accounts set up for your business, no matter what niche you're in. Because once you do have those accounts and you are somewhat active on them, it shows your clients that, or end leads that you are actually uh, a business that's staying current, you're trying to engage with everyone, and you're there if they have any questions. So that's important for them. You can obviously do paid ads. Now, paid ads, uh, depending on budget for the business, could really help uh, get leads much quicker. Uh, be because paid ads are very targeted, uh, if set up correctly, you can capture the exact audience for your business that are more likely to buy from you. And it comes down to how much are you willing to spend uh, per lead? And if that pays off uh, the investment, then you can uh, increase the numbers for the ads and see the returns are getting bigger and bigger. And of course, uh, engaging, updating the and staying current with your social media, like we said earlier, is important. So it does no harm to your business. It's only a beneficial thing to do. So might as well, it's free. And this last part here I want to go over, this is one of my favorites, uh, analyzing the stats, uh, mainly because this is the area that you can see exactly what you did right, what you did wrong, and adjusting things based on, the, on that information. And from there, you can actually learn a lot about the customers and the clients that come on your website and make those necessary adjustments, adjustments to get the leads happening. Now, this next area is something that is a very valuable material that I'm going to share with you guys is to track every move on your website. And what I'm going to show you is not something that easily was found. I actually used the tool myself for a long time uh, until I decided to finally share with everyone. So analyzing data, the first one is uh, most people know about this is Google Analytics. Uh, analyzing the data of your website. For those of you that don't know, I'm going to show you a quick example um, of what it looks like. So Google Analytics, we have uh, this is Pretty much you select the dates uh, that you want to have uh, the analytics showing you from and to. And then you kind of analyze what city they're from. You see who is on the site right now. Uh, looks like there's one person on right now. You can see what pages people are opening a lot. You can see how many organic searches happen, where they're coming from. There's a lot of information that you can set up if you set it up correctly. Um, I don't want to dive too deep into this, but the idea is this was probably the greatest way to see how is your website performing, not just in terms of people and where they land, but the back end things like how fast it's loading, how is it reacting to Google and so on. Now, the next one is the live website recording. And this is an absolutely amazing tool that I've been using, uh, SmartSap. Uh, essentially what that tool allows you to do is two things. First of all, it allows you to have a chat on your site. Um, if you actually been on our site, breakdeals.com, you'll see that we have a chat on the bottom right. And essentially what that does is when a user comes to the site, if we are live as an agent on the back end of that chat, then we are happily going to be able to start uh, having a conversation with that potential lead. And as they talk to us, we're able to, we're able to talk about how we can help them. We can navigate them through the pages where they are and we can give them help when needed. 
Now, what the other thing that this chat does in the background actually is, it actually records the screen as the person is going through your site. Now, I'm gonna show you a quick example of that as well. Um, I'm just gonna pull it up here. And this is absolutely helping a lot to understand about how your clients are thinking and, and what are they doing. You can see exactly where the, what websites uh, or what pages they've been on, what computer they're using, what browsers they're using, and so on. So essentially, you can, for example, if we click on, let's just see uh, one, oops, I don't know why that's refreshing right now. So if I click on, let's say, let's go to this one here we can actually see exactly where the user was clicking on, what he was doing on the site. Uh, the format might be a little bit weird, but uh, it gives you a really good understanding of what the person clicked on. Uh, in this case, the person was just scrolling through. Um, it just shows you a basic understanding of the site itself, and based on that information, you can make adjustments. Okay, so let me just close that out because I don't wanna get too deep into that either. But I re highly recommend this one because uh, based on that info, you can make so many changes to the site uh, and then you can see the new reaction to it and again, test and refine. Okay, so covered all the important steps. Obviously there's more in depth to it, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Okay guys, so um, thanks Dan, really good presentation. <laughs> Um, if you guys have any questions, like I said, the um, question function is the bottom of the control panel. Just type in your question and I will relay it to Dan. Okay, so do we not have any questions then? I guess I explained really well this I time. I guess you did a good presentation and people just are, you don't have any questions. Either that or they're still taking notes, one or the other. Possibly. I really like, um, I really like the ending to that. I love that. Oh, okay, hold on. We do have a question. Okay. No, it's not a question. Just somebody saying that you did a great job. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> So we'll include all those links in the emails that you send out to them uh, on our YouTube channel. We'll make sure to put those links as well. And uh, the smart sab, the MailChimp, everything will be included in there so they don't have to search for it. Uh, so Greg, uh, we are going to be sending you a copy of the um, presentation. So uh, you should receive an email, a follow-up email about uh, two hours from now. And uh, like uh, Dan said, all the links will be included and also Dan's uh, uh, contact information too. So if you guys don't have any questions now but can think of something, then you can definitely just contact him directly. Um, I'm sure he'd be happy if he did. And uh, yeah, you definitely have to check out his YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff on there. This is the second webinar that we've done with Dan and um, both, one, both webinars have been really great. So um, appreciate it, Dan. No yeah, problem, everybody gets problem. a copy, Alicia everyone uh people people who didn't weren't able to attend and also people who did attend so you're all gonna get a copy yeah and if for whatever reason it gets lost in the emails it's always on our youtube channel so they'll see it there too yeah yeah don't forget to subscribe of course and like and share <laughs> yeah okay well i think that's it that's all so um thanks again dan and on behalf of the better business bureau and Brag deal wish you all a wonderful rainy Thursday. Um, yeah, Friday can't come soon enough. Anyways, have a good day, guys. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.